Oh yeah, I'm gonna get this guy. <laughs> While getting ready for some more Texas sidewalk recipes, I received an unexpected visit from this knucklehead, the bad seasoning dealer. Hey fool, I heard you also work on cars, and I need an oil change right now. Man, why should I help you? Let me change your mind. Whoa, whoa, hold on man. Put the mini skillet down, homie. I'll take care of it so I can get you back on the road selling your bootleg seasoning. Yeah, you better. I guess he got tired of spending a hundred bucks just to get an oil change. Not only that, but you have to trust that they're using good oil and hopefully screw the oil filter back on. Well, I don't like wasting time, money, and I want to know the job was done right. This quick oil change tutorial can be used generally for any vehicle. But specifically for this video, we'll be working on a 2010 Toyota Corolla. And there is a tool you'll need if you have a 2009 through 2016 Toyota. So let's get straight to it. Here are some of the items you'll need. A basic ratchet and socket set, and of course some oil. I'm using high mileage full synthetic since my vehicle has over 250,000 miles. It is a Toyota after all. Check the type of oil you need by looking in your owner's manual or sometimes even the oil cap will tell you. Use any brand that you like. Generally people tend to pick a brand and stick to it. For the 2010 Corolla, this is the oil filter that it uses. It's not the traditional metal screw on and off filter, but a paper filter that you have to place inside a plastic housing. This is the tool that you'll need to remove the oil filter housing. It has grooves on it to fit the teeth of the housing to take it off. If you don't use it, you'll damage the plastic and it'll lose all its teeth. If your vehicle has the traditional oil filter like this, sometimes the filter is screwed on too tight and very difficult to take off. You can use this tool attached to a ratchet and it'll grip the oil filter taking it right off. You'll also need a rag, a container to catch the oil while it drains, gloves and safety glasses. And very important to use are some good quality jack stands. Don't trust your life with a floor jack holding up your vehicle. Speaking of the floor jack, I got this at Harbor Freight about 12 years ago and I love it. If you work on cars, this makes life much easier. Also a couple blocks of wood to help keep the vehicle from rolling backwards. Go ahead and place them behind the rear tires. Engage your parking brake and pop open the hood. If you don't know how to lift the hood, there's a latch that will simply lift up and the hood will release. Go ahead and locate the oil cap. Simply unscrew it and place it aside. If the cap is on too tight, use your multi-tool or some pliers and screw it off. Get your floor jack and place it on the frame of the vehicle. In my case, I place it directly behind the tow hook. Lift it until you have enough room to get your jack stands underneath the vehicle. After that, place the jack stands under the frame or under designated spots. Locate your owner's manual and it'll tell you the right locations to place your jack stand. I'm using the steel lip. Raise the jack and line up the middle notch with the lip. Slowly lower the vehicle until it slightly rests on the jack stand. You still want the floor jack to have some contact with the vehicle as a backup. Throw your rag down and slide your bowl under the vehicle. Place a mat or a piece of cardboard on the ground so you can work comfortably. Don't forget your tools and let's get under the car. What you're looking for is a pan with a screw on it, and it's usually a hex bolt. If you can locate the oil filter, the oil pan is nearby. If you can tell, there's also a pan with a screw on the other side. That's the transmission pan, and commonly uses a Torx or a square bolt. To remove the bolt, I'm using a 14mm socket. Unscrew the bolt until you can loosen it up by hand. While you're loosening the bolt, push it in towards the pan so it won't leak. Once you feel like the bolt is all the way loose, pull the screw away quickly and let the oil drain. When the engine is hot, that's the best time to do an oil change. That way you get all the dirty oil out and it'll drain much faster. Wipe the oil pan screw clean and you may notice that it has a metal washer on it. It's recommended to change the washer every time, but I never have. Change it if you notice a leak. Place the screw up so it won't get any dirt on it, which can and will go inside your engine. Once the oil is pretty much drained, screw your bolt back in. If your engine is hot, be careful and don't over tighten it. You can strip the threads on the pan. As you can see, once I screw on the bolt by hand, I have to use the ratchet back and forth. The threads have been stripped. I bought this car used, so it wasn't me. I promise. Now it's time to remove the oil filter located behind the oil pan. Grab your oil filter tool and line up the grooves to the ones on the housing. Connect your ratchet to it and you may have to give it a few hits to get it started. Unscrew it until you can remove it by hand. Make sure your oil container is below and let the rest of the oil drain out. Now if you have a traditional oil filter, you may need to use this spider-like tool to remove it. Simply attach your ratchet and when you turn it to the left, it tightens around the filter. Here's a quick example on how simple it makes the job. See? Pretty easy, right? Yeah, it can get a little messy, but you can place a plastic cup over it and there'll be much less mess, but I like to get dirty. Now real quick, if you have this type of filter, make sure to put some fresh oil on the rubber gasket so it won't stick to the engine. Alright, going back to this car's oil filter. It should also come with a rubber o-ring. Remove the old filter by pulling it straight up. Grab a pick and pull off the old o-ring. Keep it in mind which groove it came out of. If you place it in the wrong groove, it won't sit right and will cause a leak. Place the new o-ring back on. This is where it slides in. Install the new oil filter by pushing it straight down. Before you reinstall the filter, it's good practice to pre-fill the oil filter. If you don't, the engine will run dry for a few seconds until the filter gets full. Pour some oil inside until the paper gets soaked and you'll be fine. You would do the same thing for the traditional oil filter. Screw on the oil filter housing and tighten it up until you can't turn it no more. Wipe everything down with a rag so you can see if there's something leaking instead of looking at old oil stains. Raise the vehicle up slightly to take pressure off the floor jacks. You forgot about them, didn't you? Raise the lever up and remove both jack stands. 
Slide out your oil container and slowly lower the vehicle. Grab a small funnel and make sure it's clean. Add your oil, which in my case is a little bit under four and a half quarts. Check your owner's manual for the right oil capacity. When you're pouring in the oil, hold the bottle like this so it can flow out easier, instead of gurgling and causing a mess. Place the cap back on and turn on the engine. We'll then check the oil level once the engine runs for about a minute. In the meantime, remove the wood blocks and dump your old oil into an old bottle. You can then take it to an auto parts store like AutoZone so they can dispose it. Here's a quick tip. When determining how much oil you need, the distance between these two dots is one quart of oil. So if your oil is showing that it's at the bottom dot, it just needs one quart of oil to get to the top. All right, let's go ahead and check the oil level. Insert the dipstick all the way in. As long as the oil level is between these two dots, you're good. But I'd rather have it closer to the top. But in this case, it's perfectly fine. You can then check it after your next drive to see if you need to add any more oil. Place it back in and close the hood. Before we wrap it up, let's make sure this guy never comes back to me to get his oil changed. Just what the doctor ordered. All right, man, all done. Thanks, homie. It's nice to find an honest mechanic. Yeah, whatever. So long, sucker. <laughs> Wait, what the heck is going on? Dang it. I should have known better not to trust him. I'll get you for this funky cold. You just change the oil yourself and save time and money. Here's some more videos to check out if you like doing things yourself or want to laugh with my world-famous Texas sidewalk recipes. See you on the next video and have a blessed day.